Hey there, art nerds. Today, we're taking a look at Shin Han's Korean watercolors. I really enjoyed their PWC watercolors and I'm looking forward to seeing how their Korean colors differ from the PWC line. Hey there, art nerds. So today you are in for a treat and no, it isn't just the fact that I have new art prints up in the Natto shop, including some of these designs. Today we are taking a look at another Shin Han product and this is a watercolor set that I have had in my possession for a while and I finally have the time and the brain space to actually talk about it. Today we are talking about Shin Han Professional Korean Color and I am really really excited to talk about this because we have talked about Chinese watercolors, we have talked about Japanese watercolors, and now we finally get to talk about Korean watercolors. And what I mean by this is we have talked about more traditional Japanese palettes, more traditional Chinese palettes, and now we finally get to talk about a more traditional Korean palette. We have talked about Korean watercolors here on the channel before, or at least watercolor made in Korea. We've talked about Mungyo, we've talked about Magello, we have talked about uh, Shin Han, both their PWC, as well as their professional line in the skinny little tubes, as well as Shin Han Pass. So I am really excited to take a look at a palette that's designed to be more traditional, both in terms of how it handles, as well as in terms of the color selection. Now, these watercolors here were formulated to work on Hanbi, which is a mulberry paper. I may or may not have something similar, but not exact in my stash of papers. So I may try to dig some up and find it. And if I am going to use it on Hanbi, then I need to use the painting glue, which I, also happen to have, and what's funny is I purchased this at David's Art Center. It was next to the Shinhan PWC watercolors that I am constantly scooping up. But if memory serves me right, and it has been a really long time, I believe that I ordered this set from Amazon before I even moved for the second time in three years. So it's been kind of waiting for me and I am so excited to finally get to take a look at it. So I have been doing a little bit of research. I'm going to sprinkle that in as we talk about these watercolors and I'm also going to have that information in the show notes. So if you are interested or if you have more information to share because Honestly, it can be a little challenging to find information in the US about traditional Korean watercolor. They keep wanting to send me over to traditional Chinese watercolor. And while I'm delighted to read about that, that's not exactly what I'm looking for here today. So if you guys have additional resources or additional knowledge, or if you can point me in the right direction, I would be really, really appreciative of that. I'm also going to include links and references in the show notes as well, rather than the citations here on the video. So if you're a nerd like me and you wanna learn more about the art supplies we're talking about today, make sure you check the description and click the show notes link. Those are available to everyone, not just my patrons. And speaking of my patrons, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons on Patreon, because the funds from my Patreon go to purchasing interesting and unique watercolor supplies like the one we're taking a look at today. This is actually going to be filmed over a long course of time because there's several things I wanna kind of test and figure out. We're gonna go ahead though and take a look at the package and open it up. So it has a very neutral, understated packaging with what looks like mulberry paper in the background. It says Shin Han, Shin Han Professional Korean Color. Uh, Khalid Professionnel, Qualité Professionnel, Professionnel Qualité. Uh, my mastery of any language other than English is atrocious and I'm not always so good at English. And this kind of falls into, from what I understand, it's the same sort of high quality as their PWC line. So this is like a higher end. They actually have a one step down from this Korean color palette as well. So if you're not interested in spending the money that it costs to buy this, and I will get back to you guys with an updated price because I purchased this two years ago. Inflation is a thing. I wanna make sure I give you guys as accurate a price as I possibly can, 
for the time that we're living in now, as well as places where you can find this palette if you are interested in purchasing this palette. But there is um, one of these, a step down, a student grade version of this. So it says a superior blend of the finest colors, Shinhan Professional Korean Color for the discerning artist. This is a 24 color set and this is the A set. I believe with 24 colors you have an A set and you have a B set making a total of, I believe one of the websites I found that gave more information about this because believe it or not, Shinhan's current website doesn't have a whole lot about this palette. You would think they would have oodles of information and they would talk about the pigments and all that good stuff. but not so much, but I do believe there are 50 total colors in this range. And other than that, there is not a lot of information that we can read. So make sure you check the description. I'm also going to link my other Shinhan reviews, including from years ago when I reviewed their Shinhan touch markers. That's how I actually first found out about Shinhan as a company. And I was impressed with the quality of the markers, but they can be a little bit challenging to get a hold of, at least where I live. So while I have some, I never invested in a huge collection of them. This came shrink wrapped. It has the Amazon sticker on it and the sticker proclaims that this is new. So for today's review, I am going to be looking at this through the lens of an American watercolor comic artist. I make the comic Seven Inch Kara. I would love it if you would check it out. You can read it for free at sevenincharacom and that'll give you guys kind of an idea of the kind of art I make and maybe even what I'm looking for when it comes to watercolor if you're not familiar with my work. Ooh, this is neat, okay. So we have our tube information in English. We have a number, we have a series number, and then we have the name in English. So I appreciate that. That's all here on the lid. We also have a little pamphlet here, which this might be why there's not like Buku information online is it might be right here. We will take a look at this in just a minute. And then we have our really beautiful tubes of paint. Now, those of you who have hung out with me for a while, you know I have talked about Marie's professional Chinese watercolor paints a fair amount, including doing something um, that might be recommended against using them for the kind of watercolor that I like to do rather than Chinese prof uh, traditional Chinese watercolor. And I found that they handled quite well and I was quite happy with them. Now, supposedly with these, you can also use them for more Western style watercolor techniques and they can be used on cotton rag papers as well. And you don't need the glue if you're doing that. So that's kind of what I'm going to be focusing on. But if I can find my mulberry paper, I'm definitely gonna end up making a mess and making a fool of myself, but that is what we are here for. But what I was going to say is actually some of these colors in this palette are really reminiscent of what I have seen from traditional Chinese paints as well as Japanese palettes where we have these beautiful teals and these beautiful crimsons. Now what it has that is, and also it kind of reminds me of the Holbein Iridori line. That line is currently available as a gouache, but it also used to be available as a watercolor. And I really loved the color palette in the Iridori line. So I'm kind of getting those vibes with this as well, which is really exciting because it is a color palette that I really like and I think it's very useful. So the individual tubes are huge. These are 20 milliliter tubes. I mean, these are, these are fair size tubes. Although I do believe you would be painting with these a bit more thickly if you were using them in a more traditional manner. So they might get used up a little bit faster. So the tubes themselves have the color number, the color name in English, as well as several other uh, languages, light fast information, transparency, and then the series that it's in. And it also has pigment information. Ah, man, Shinhan, you just, you just deliver. And in tiny text, it says Shinhan professional Korean color is scientifically created using the finest binder and the highest quality pigments. Best for thinning painting media such as oriental rice paper. Keep out of direct sunlight. Do not put in mouth. Do not use four cloth or fabric. Keep out of reach of children. And I will also say, before we really get into this, 
These are manufactured with a gelatin binder rather than say gum arabic or honey. So if you're a vegetarian, you may want to skip these. If you are vegan, you're going to want to skip these. But frankly, that kind of binder is pretty common with both Chinese and Japanese watercolors. In fact, if I remember correctly, there was a bit of a scandal with Kuratake because they were claiming to be using a vegetarian friendly binder and it turned out it was not vegetarian friendly. But I might be misremembering that one. I believe I talked about it in the Boku Undo Kuratake Graphite review. So I will link that if I can remember to do so for you guys. But just a heads up, not vegan, not vegetarian gelatin binder. So what I want to do before we, so, okay, let me give you guys an overview of what I'm hoping to do in this review. I want to swatch these when they're fresh from the tube and I want to see if I can get them to set up in half pans. Because they have a different binder than what I'm used to, I am actually going to do a little test where I'm going to do a dot of a few colors on watercolor paper and let that dry and then try to reactivate that before I commit them to half pans just in case they don't reactivate very well it's better than wasting you know a fifth of a tube on a half pan that I can never use so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this slightly over the out of the out of the way sorry stuttering all over the place today we are gonna take a look at one of these tubes and we're going to, now supposedly they can settle in time and transit so you may want to knead them. I'm just gonna do a dot. And a dot is also going to dry a lot quicker than a half pan so I will be able to test whether or not these will reactivate a lot quicker and then be able to decide if I want to commit to doing half pans with these based on that information. So I think I'm gonna do maybe eight colors and just kind of try to pick from across the gamut, but also pick colors that I feel might be more likely to set up and never reactivate. Now I have actually tried Marie, see, there we go. We have a little bit of that separation. Not a problem, just need to knead it more. And it is, being a gelatin binder, it is clearer right now as, uh, and to be fair, this little bottle of glue has sat on my table in full light, because y'all know I work on the surface of the sun, for two or three years, and it's only yellowed a little bit. So um, I'm not suggesting you display these in like full sunlight. I am sure there are some fairly fugitive pigments and we can explore that a bit more. Just knowing what I know about, you know, traditional Chinese watercolors and how many of those colors are manufactured like indigo. Um, many of them are, or carmine, they're dye based. So they're just gonna naturally be a little bit more fugitive. But I am not the artist who, not saying there's anything wrong with caring about that. I do think, especially if you're selling your art, caring about light fastness is important. It's part of your responsibility as an artist who is selling your art to care about that. But I don't sell a lot of my originals anymore. And um, when I do, I try to make sure that they are adequately bagged and protected to reach the next donor. And I mostly work for comics or for reproduction. So while that is a concern and I'm not totally blowing it off, it's, not a deal killer for me if I really like how the watercolors handle. So, and I'm not really keeping great track of what colors I'm swatching for this because my hope is that we're still gonna do the fresh from the tube swatches. And I'm gonna do that if these will work reconstituted. I will do that the way I've been doing that where I set them up in half pans and then I swatch from there and then I let them dry out. That's just so much easier and so much less mess for me. I mean, if they're going to end up in half pans anyway, you know? So I'm not keeping super great track of these colors, but I do think I can walk you through what I picked. So we did indigo, which is over here, ultramarine, violet, yellow ochre. This is probably crimson too, opal green 
green light and yellow light. So I am going to go, I have a table where all my half pans are currently drying right now. I am gonna go put this over there on that table. It's right under a vent and it'll be no time for y'all, but it'll probably be a few days. I'm gonna wait till these little dots are really just solidly dried before we try to reconstitute them. All right, these little samples have had several days to dry out. So let's see if we can reconstitute them. The answer is looking so far like yes, which is heartening. Of course, I'm still glad I did this little test anyway, because it would be a shame to put these into half pans. Oh, ooh, here's one that might not, or it might. There we go. I had just caught a lot of the binder. You know, it's always discouraging to set up watercolors and watercolor adjacent products in half pans only to not be able to paint with them because they have become permanent. So these kind of little tests can be a, ooh, that's pretty, can be a good way to see if you'll actually be able to reconstitute those watercolor products. So that looks like a yes. I am going to go ahead then and start filling up those half pans. So now that we know that the Shin Han Professional Korean Color will indeed reactivate, it is time to transfer it to half pans. And I have this cute bamboo watercolor palette that I thought would be a fitting home for these 24 colors. They are the same size and it has a nice little slide top lid. I picked this up at David's Art Center, but if you're shopping online, I believe you can find similar on AliExpress and Amazon. I was just happy to be able to support a local business. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and set these up into half pans, and then we will do our from wet swatching, and then I'll let them dry for a week, and we can do our from dry swatching. And I have some rice paper. It is probably not Korean rice paper. I had some difficulty finding that, and I wanted to, there are different types of rice paper and there are different uses for rice paper. So I tried to find something that I felt like would at least give us a good idea of how these paints handle, even if it's not the correct rice paper for the job. So I do have some rice paper and I also have Blick cotton rag paper and we're gonna be swatching on both. The colors in this 24 color set are white, black one, yellow light, yellow deep, orange, scarlet, carmine two, Crimson 2, Crimson 1, Green Light, Blue Green, Opal Green, Sap Green, Green Dark, Greenish Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Violet Red Violet, Ultramarine Blue, and Indigo. And I will have pigment info and light fast info in the description, so make sure you check there. Caps on these tubes are fairly easy to screw on and off. There is some binder and pigment separation. The watercolors are more liquidy than I expected. Kneading seems to help. The colors are brighter and more vivid than I expected in mass tone. And I lied, raw umber has some bad separation. This makes me wonder how these compare to Marie's as well as how these compare to other Shin Han products. Most of these colors are labeled as opaque or semi-opaque with very few transparent colors and many of those transparent colors actually have very short light fastness shelf lives which I found to be interesting and I think you guys might want to keep in mind.
We're gonna start with the rice paper, mostly because I'm gonna also be doing some color mixing and maybe even wet into wet testing at some point with this. This is uh, Migres Shoe or Ripe Sean paper. So, um, gee, I looked it up. You have ripe and then you have raw. One of them diffuses out more, is more blendy, and the other one kind of holds the lines tighter. I don't remember which is which. We're going to find out together today. I do not have the felt mat that if you're doing Chinese watercolor, typically you would want to have like a felt surface and then you put your paper down and then you use your weights. I don't have that. Um, and I'm having trouble finding my Chinese watercolor weights. I'm going to keep looking for them. But basically what that felt would do is it would absorb the excess water. So it's not just sitting on, you know, a non-absorbent desktop or it's not ruining like your wooden tabletop, for example. Again, Korean watercolor, Chinese watercolor similarities, not the same thing. It's actually kind of challenging to find a lot of information about Korean watercolor. It's easier to find information about Chinese watercolor. I'm not trying to conflate them. I'm just trying to work with what I have. Also want to say, I am not an expert in Chinese watercolor, Korean watercolor, or Japanese watercolor, nor am I pretending to be. I think all three of them are interesting. I'm interested in learning more about them, but I don't know anything about them. I am not, or everything I know I have found out from the internet. I am not the font of all knowledge, and I'll try to remember to link all my sources in the description below in case you guys are curious to learn more yourselves. So for best results, I should be mixing some of this glue. This is painting glue. It is also made by Shin Han. It is for use with the Korean watercolors. If I'm painting on rice paper, I don't have any experience <laughs> with doing that. I don't know what ratio to do that in. So for this time, I'm going to not. And then as I dig up more information, I may choose to do a video where we play around with doing those sort of things. But I'm just acknowledging that for best results on this paper, I probably should be using this glue in some way, shape or form. I am not, so we're probably not going to have best results. While these tubes are still wet, color control is challenging. It's so easy to pick up too much. These are probably not meant to be used wet in half pans. They are probably meant to be used in small saucers and then you add water to them probably similar to how you would do for Chinese watercolor. So this is probably not the intended way of using these watercolors on this type of paper. And I'm not using a traditional brush. I am just using a quill for this because it allows for larger color application than the brushes that I would have for Chinese watercolor. There isn't a whole lot I can tell you about this as someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with painting on rice paper and who prefers to work with her watercolors mostly from Gensai style or from dried half pans. I did notice though that the colors are pretty vibrant and that they muddied the water pretty quickly. And if Korean watercolors are milled the way that Chinese watercolors are, that makes sense. Chinese watercolors and Iridori watercolors and even Gensai are designed to be more opaque. They're not really designed for lots and lots of really thin, delicate layers. It's really a more immediate painting style. If you're not familiar with Chinese watercolor, you should definitely check it out. But just to bring up a little visual mental reference, kind of like loose watercolor florals, where there's not a lot of layering, there's not a lot of delicately building things up through layers, it's very immediate. Um, if there is wet to, into wet, it's usually done on the brush. 
that sort of thing. So I'm going to readjust the scheme that I'm kind of looking at these watercolors from, keeping that in mind. But I am also going to kind of judge them by my own sensibilities and the sensibilities that I use when I'm painting comics and when I'm reviewing Western style watercolors. That doesn't mean they're bad if they don't meet those sensibilities. It doesn't mean they're not designed to meet the purpose that they're intended to meet. It just means that they might not be fitting for my purpose. They might not be useful for me. But to determine that, we need to swatch on cotton rag paper and we also need to let these paints dry out a week and see how well they reconstitute. For this part of the test, we are going to be swatching on Blix cotton rag watercolor paper. It is the cotton rag paper that I use for pretty much all of these watercolor tests, whether we're testing student grade watercolors or professional grade watercolors at this point. It is block bound and it is Blix brand, but I'm actually quite happy with this paper. I really like it. I find it comparable to Arches while being a little bit more affordable because these reviews do get very expensive. And now is a wonderful time to thank my wonderful patrons over on Patreon because their funds, the money that they supply, that's what I use to buy watercolors like this to review for you guys or to replenish my supplies of things that I use as part of these reviews like the Blick Cotton Rag paper. If you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it and you would like early access to videos like this one, printable coloring sheets and access to my class materials, you can join me at patreon.com slash natasoup. Thank you again to my patrons. Your support allows me to do these kind of reviews. So on the cotton rag paper, we're going to be looking at two factors. We are going to be checking opacity and we're also going to see how these blend out with water. Once I finish this test, I'm going to put these away to dry out for a week and then come back and we're going to swatch everything all over again. And that's when I'm going to do some of my color mis mixing tests. Now, with Chinese style watercolors, you're not really intended to do a whole lot of color mixing, but I found that with the professional, with the Marie's professional watercolors, I was able to do that. In fact, I uh, used them for a completely unintended watercolor purpose, and I'll link that down in the description as well in the cards for you guys. I think you guys will enjoy checking it out. So I understand that these watercolors may not be designed for a whole lot of color mixing. I'm also going to be comparing these to Shinhan's PWC watercolors, which I use a lot, which I use in my classes, and which I happen to like. I think they're a very good professional grade at a more budget price point. So that's generally the nice watercolors that I recommend people get started with rather than wasting a lot of time with student grade paints that they may or may not like. So I'm also going to be comparing these paints against PWC. So far, there isn't a whole lot to say about these. The colors are bright and saturated. From what I've swatched, I can't really see much of a difference between these and say PWC, other than maybe these 
have like a little bit more opacity to them and they do have a slightly different color palette so if you like watercolor but you want to introduce more opacity in this might be a good way to go some of the colors do have nice granulation like the black some of the neutrals the ultramarine and the indigo and the neutrals themselves look nice they don't have that fakey appearance that i've seen with cheap brands so now i need to set this aside for a week let them dry out and we will see how they handle once we've reconstituted them. Okay, so these Shin Han Korean watercolors have had several days to dry. They are dry to the touch, they're inflexible, some of them have split. So that means we can re-swatch, we can do our color mixing, and we can do our wet into wet test. So after drying out for a week, I was impressed to see that most of the paints reactivated quickly and easily with a couple of exceptions. I found it much easier to handle the paint and the color from the dried half pans, but I have expressed this preference many times in the past, so really, who is surprised? So for the most part, these reconstituted really well. I found that they were easier to handle as dried and reactivated watercolors than they were straight from the tube. And most of the colors are very bright and saturated and were a little bit easier to handle. There are a couple of exceptions. Some of the neutrals actually kind of shifted color or are much less saturated. One of them, this one here, which is this one here became really grainy and difficult to activate. This one became a lot lighter. I don't know if it's because I wasn't picking up as much paint. That definitely isn't the case with this one. Who knows what that's about. But in general, the half pan format is just much easier for someone like me to use and would be my preference. So now let's swatch on the cotton rag paper. And again, colors reactivate bright and saturated. Gran granulation is more apparent on the cotton rag and there's still more opacity to the Korean watercolors than to the PWC watercolors. So while these finish drying, I want to do a little bit of color mixing. Now this bamboo palette does not come with a mixing surface, so I am going to go grab a ceramic palette to mix on. I also wanted to show you guys the resulting chocolate milk that comes from swatching all 24 colors. For the color mixing portion of this test, I was able to mix a variety of secondary colors. Although I noticed this set doesn't include a phthalo or a cool blue, nor does it include a cool yellow. The Viridian Green with the warm yellow does make for a range of really nice bright greens. I was able to make some good purples and oranges as well as Payne's Gray and sepia-esque tones with the colors in this set.
So we still have a little bit of space left. Let's do our wet into wet test over here because I will probably be doing a standalone field. Well, no, I'll probably include this field test in this, but I'm not gonna be doing it on this piece of paper. For this mini wet into wet test, the colors diffuse readily and easily, although darker colors have a tendency to take over very quickly. This is particularly true with the pooled water as these dried. So it doesn't just dry right there, it really spreads out and we lose a lot of the colors that I had dabbed in there. So with these wet and wet dark colors are going to really take over. So I have one final test that I wanna do before we do the field test and that is the lift test. And I'm actually going to lift both from the row that I painted about a week ago, as well as the row that just finished drawing. For the lift test, I lifted both the original swatches and the newer swatches. Both sets saw some lifting. With the original swatches, lifting was particularly prone with colors that were heavily applied in the original swatches. Lifting was also more likely in certain colors among both sets, which is to be expected. That's actually a quality I am looking for. Both the old swatches and the newer swatches are prone to lifting, although I think the newer swatches in general are a bit more prone in some instances. The older ones with the thicker paint, like the dark purple, are definitely more prone to lifting since the paint is on there so thick, and some colors are going to be more likely to lift than others, like some of these. Some colors are more likely to lift than others, which is pretty normal for watercolor. So I like these, I'm enjoying them so far, and I've had some really good experiences with PWC watercolors, both in the field test as well as over the years, using them in my classes and painting with them regularly. So I am looking forward to doing a field test with the Shin Han Korean watercolors. We're gonna do that next. Before I start painting, I'm gonna make a little color map so that I can easily reference what colors are where. The colors in this palette are pretty close in terms of mass tone and pile tone, but I still wanted to have a handy reference that would allow me to more successfully mix colors. Now, one of these colors did not reactivate very well at all. I'm sure you guys can guess which one that is. So I am painting on Arches Cold Press because I'm running low on my favorite Canton Moulin de Roy. It seems to no longer be in production. So if you guys have a source and I've tried Jackson's, let me know. And I wanted to try something out in my own art style. I decided to mix the skin tone first since this set has a few promising neutrals. And I'm starting with underpainting. So I'm doing the kind of purpley tones and the kind of blushy tones in her skin tone first. And then I'm going to paint her skin tone on top of that. If you're looking for some tutorials on how I paint people and how I mix skin tones, I'll link the whole playlist for you guys down in the description below. In general, these paints are fine. I believe they're a bit more opaque than the regular PWC watercolors, but they don't handle all that differently. I can mix, I can glaze, I can do wet into wet, but they do cloud up my line art. I would not recommend using these over regular PWC watercolors, like instead of regular PWC watercolors, particularly for this kind of layered illustration work. The regular line of PWC watercolors will work much better for this and requires less inking and correction, and it will give you cleaner glazes. I think this issue is most apparent on her face, which is the area you would least want this issue to occur. I feel like these colors are drying dusty and not as transparent as I'm used to, and it's hard to build up the kind of saturation that I would usually want. I would say the re regular PWC watercolors are probably a better fit for this style of art. Now, I was capable of layering on top of existing watercolors for opaque details, so it might be best to think of this in the same category as the Shin Han Pass, a hybrid watercolor. So 
as this painting progressed, I felt like I kind of struggled to build up certain colors that I spent a lot of time going over certain areas and really trying to build them up. This is going to be particularly true in the arm knitting. That color red, it was so hard for me to get what I had in mind. I had kind of an ombre red effect in my mind that I know I could get with other types of watercolors, but these just really don't work particularly well when you're mixing the colors, when you're working with diluted colors, when you're trying to do like thinner mixes and less saturation to make your pastels, and when you're mixing colors to get your secondary colors. The set is just really not geared to that. And honestly, this is probably not the intended use case at all. I was just kind of doing my own thing in my own art style. So if you paint a, in a more traditional Korean watercolor way, or if you use these for like loose watercolor florals, let me know if you like them. I could see these being a great fit for the loose watercolor florals because the colors are really impactful. They're really immediate and you have a wide array of colors. So honestly, you don't necessarily have to do a lot of color mixing if you're good with the colors that you have. So you guys are gonna be able to see this as we start to build up the red that it really loses its impact. You really can't see the under glazes the way you would be able to with more transparent watercolors. But this is why I do the field test. These kind of issues become apparent when I'm painting an illustration in my own art style. And whether you like my art style or not, hopefully I am able to show you guys what you need to know to decide whether these watercolors are a good fit for you. That said, if you do like my art style, I do have some affordable art prints over in my shop and I do also sell originals. This one, in fact, is available for purchase if you're interested. Feel free to reach out to me and let me know and I can get, you, get back to you with a price. This is also going to be one of the designs that I offer as an art print later on if you're on a budget but you'd still like to own some of my art. Eventually I decided to just kind of quit fighting with it and to just work with what I had and work towards finishing this illustration up. That's a point I've been coming to more and more, particularly when painting watercolor comic pages is rather than perfect, we're gonna go for done and we're gonna try to finish these things up so that we can make progress and move forward because honestly, nobody probably cares as much as I do. It's probably not bothering anyone else as much as it bothers me. But I knew while I was painting this that I was going to have to re-ink a lot of areas because they tended to get obscured as we worked with these more opaque watercolors.
now that I've finished the field test, I want to do the obvious. I want to do the thing you guys have been waiting for and compare the Shinhan Korean watercolors against Shinhan PWC, Shinhan Pass, and against Marie's Professional Chinese watercolors. We're going to start with the most obvious option. We're going to start with the PWCs. Both PWC watercolors and the Korean watercolors work well straight from the tube and also reactivate well from half pan. So they allow some flexibility in your work. Both of these are manufactured by Shin Han and they're both kind of the top of the line for what you could get. If you're a more immediate painter, say a loose florals person, then the opacity of the Korean watercolors may be just what you're looking for. In mass tone, the colors are saturated and brilliant, but quickly use their brilliance as they're diluted. They're not really designed for the type of art that I was painting today. I would recommend for artists who utilize a lot of glazes and layers that they use PWC regular watercolors instead. They'll be easier to find and probably a bit cheaper while still being excellent quality. I bought these at my local brick and mortar, David's Art Supply. I believe you can also find them on sites like Dick Blick. So they're pretty easy to find. I think in terms of opacity and handling, these could be compared to Shin Han Pass. Shin Han Pass is a gouache watercolor hybrid. It's designed to work either way. I find it doesn't do either particularly good, but it's great for people who want both options. They want to be able to do watercolor and add some much more opaque layers on top of it. These could be a good option. Shin Han Pass is relatively inexpensive compared to other brands of gouache and compared to PWC watercolors and certainly compared to the Korean watercolors, but it can be kind of challenging to find. I believe, don't quite remember, but I believe I ordered these from St. Louis Art Supply, but they're not a ubiquitous thing. And if you want like open stock tubes, they are harder to find like that. However, so is the Korean. Now I never set these up into half pans. Generally, I prefer not to use my gouache in half pans if my intended use is as a gouache. If I'm gonna use it as like a more watered down watercolor, that's not an issue. But if I want that full strength opacity, I find it's best for me to just work straight from the tube. So these I think are kind of like a higher end version of pass. They're not marketed as a hybrid, but they're much more opaque than their PWC counterparts and they would benefit from being handled like you might pass. Fewer layers and a thicker application. These are Marie's Professional Chinese Watercolors. I reviewed these for you guys a while back. So for all of these, I'm going to include some footage and I wanted to open them up to show you guys. I think the Korean watercolors are probably the most similar to uh, Marie's. I would also kind of compare them to Holbein's Iridori line, which I talked about years ago and is now, the watercolor Iridori is now defunct, but they've started doing gouache Iridori. So if you want those really, really saturated colors, that could be a good option. Turner also has a Japanesque set that I have not reviewed yet, but I'm looking forward to talking about it with you guys. So the tubes for the Shinhan Korean are much, much larger than the Marie's, but the Marie's is cheaper and a little bit easier to find. I also have more colors available to me with Shin Han's Korean watercolors, but I found Marie's to be much easier to mix and fairly transparent as washes. To be fair though, I handled the illustration for both of these differently than their intended use case. And I know with Marie's, they actually, uh, I have seen warnings against using these particular kinds of watercolors for the kind of painting that I do. So I was just being kind of obstinate. Um, now, to be fair with the Marie's, I handled the illustration very differently. I painted over a red line sketch, then I inked it rather than painting over inks. So I may not have been able to judge the coverage accurately. So what are the pros and cons of Shin Han's Korean watercolors? I feel like this set has a beautiful presentation and colors. There's a couple of interesting colors in the mix that are not common in other sets. Let me grab my big swatch sheet so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This was straight from the tube. This was from half pan, wet into wet, and color mixing down here. 
Colors have a very brilliant and saturated mass tone and colors can be used at full strength to add opaque details. And then here are the same kind of swatches straight from the tube and then from dried half pans on a Chinese rice paper. It's not the actual paper that they recommend, but I really had tr difficulty getting a hold of that. So what about the cons? Because these are not as common in the US, they may be harder to find and they may cost more due to lack of accessibility and competition. For your average watercolorist, the regular PWC watercolors are going to be a better fit. Those are also, depending on where you're shopping, fairly inexpensive. They are finely milled and they're professional grade. Those are what I use when I'm teaching classes and I'm providing the watercolors. Korean watercolors do not handle as well when watered down. The colors dry kind of chalky if mixed in glaze, but this is not really their intended use case. So take what I'm saying with somewhat of a grain of salt. So what's my verdict on Shin Han's Korean watercolors? I would recommend that most watercolor artists skip these and go with regular Shinhan PWC watercolors. That said, I am not a Korean watercolorist and I have not yet learned how to handle these watercolors the way they are intended. So those of you interested in these for their intended use case and for their properties as Korean watercolors, <laughs> y'all might want to take what I said with a pinch of salt. Now, if you are familiar with that art form and you'd like to chime in and let me know how you like these watercolors down in the comments below, I would greatly welcome that. If you want to link some examples of your work to showcase how you use these, that would be very, very helpful. And I will try to make sure that I flag those comments as allowed so that YouTube doesn't block it for self-promotion or whatever. Um, you can also share examples if you're interested over in my art-centric Discord server, The Paint Box, because first of all, I love different forms of watercolor. I love the immediacy. I love seeing how these paints are handled. And that's not something that is, <laughs> it wasn't taught while I was at UNO and it wasn't taught while I was at SCAD and my local museum has very few examples of, they have a Japanese art section and they have very few examples of like Japanese watercolors, for example. So like my access to this kind of stuff has been very limited and I don't always know what I'm even looking for. And I usually have to turn to Wikipedia for information. So if you want to share your work, I would love to see it. I love having my horizons broaden. general, my findings regarding the Korean watercolors are about in keeping with what the scant others have said about them. They are more like a hybrid between a watercolor and a gouache. They're a bit more opaque than the PWC watercolors and they can deliver some really vibrant colors. In their mass tone, as you guys can see, that opacity and that brilliance is an asset. They also handle well on rice papers. This is not necessarily the recommended paper, but it is a Sean watercolor paper and they are really brilliant. So they might work quite well for Chinese watercolor. However, when it comes to more layered watercolor styles, that op opacity starts to become a bit of a detriment. They can start to get a little chalky. They can lose their saturation really, really quickly and mixes and they're just not quite as brilliant. So I would not necessarily recommend using them for this kind of use case, but if you are maybe a watercolor florals artist, you might find the bright and bold opacity to be an asset rather than being detrimental. But what do you guys think? 
Are you a fan of Shin Han's Korean watercolors? Are you a fan of Chinese watercolors in general? And are there some brands that you'd like to see me try out in my art style and give you guys some feedback on them? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Hopefully I buy it and I tried it so you don't have to, but if it seems like it's a good fit for you, I do have a link down in the description below. It's an affiliate link. So funds earned from doing that help support the work that I do here on the channel. If you wanna also help support the work that I do here on the channel, I have art prints available so you can own a little bit of my art. I do sell my originals. So if there's something you love and you wanna have it, try contacting me and I'll see what I can do. And I also have a Patreon and all funds from Patreon go to supporting the work that I do here. And you can find me at patreon.com slash natosuit. I hope this was helpful in helping you guys make art a habit because I sincerely believe that finding the art supplies that work for you is going to make art a more sustainable practice. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again really soon with another art supply review tutorial or perhaps an easily influenced. Bye guys!